share up Russell Street that's snowing everywhere. We knocked back Emmett Street and left them lying there. They called for mercy, but mercy wasn't there. Cheer up Russell Street, it's snowing everywhere. It's a rare old street to play for. It's In a nation of great songwriters, few can claim to have had the impact of Dominic Beale. I wanted to find out more about what made Dominic the songwriter he was, his journey from Dublin to Scotland, and his friendship with Scottish songwriter Hamish Henderson. We paid a visit to Bean's birthplace, Russell Street, to meet trade unionist Fergus Whelan and Michael Halpin to talk about Dominic's radical, revolutionary upbringing. Russell Street is at the centre of the Bean story. They lived in a house in number 14, down just above us. Uh, the house is no longer here because the, it, was a, it was a Georgian tenement which was ultimately uh, pulled down. Dominic Bean was born into a family which was steeped in the Republican and the uh, national struggle. But they were also a very literary family. So he drew from, uh, if you like, two streams uh, of, of inspiration. His mother, Kathleen, she was a veteran of 1916, a fantastic singer. And she married Stephen Bean, who was a sign writer, re reputed, according to some of the family, to be the best sign writer in Dublin. I'm sure he was. Uh, and he himself was a, a veteran of the, of the Civil War. So he had a very, shall we say, illustrious and active uh, background. The first time I, m I remember meeting Dominic, I was probably about six years of age. And he came to our house and there was um, a few bottles of stout been drunk and songs been sung. And he brought the children uh, into... Uh, another room as it were and he entertained us with children's songs. I was too young to realise at the time that he'd had written these songs himself you know but he he was a very as we know a very talented songwriter. Come Irish men both young and stern with adventure in your soul there are better ways to spend your days than working down a hole I was tall and true, I was six foot okay, two, boy. and they broke me across the back. By a name I'm known, and it's not my own, they call me Crooked Jack. Dominic's story started here, to some extent it finished here too, because uh, after he died in Scotland and was cremated, uh, they brought his ashes over here and they were basically, at his request, uh, uh, thrown into the canal here. Unfortunately, a gust of wind came and we all swallowed uh, a lot of uh, um, Dominic's ashes on the day. As we walked away, I have a very clear memory of a man I didn't know, but he had a very st strong Scottish accent and he was obviously a Scottish singer or musician. And he says, we're all going up to the Workers' Party Club he says, to sing Dominic's songs. And the best thing about it is Dominic won't be there to fuck it up for you. <laughs> More than 30 years after his death, Bean's songs are still finding new ears and audiences today. We travelled to Dundalk to meet the Merry Wallopers, a band who cite Dominic as a key influence. We don't normally let people into our house, we just thinking. usually bring them around to the pub. Especially Dublin lads, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've just done our stock check of everything in the house, so we don't yeah, yeah, yeah. want to have to start yeah, 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 yeah. doing the stock yeah. check again after you leave. Come round and we'll show you the we'll show you the barn where we do our live stream. Good. Right, yeah. you leave the way. Come on, come on, come on. Close this after me so he doesn't get it. Don't mind anything out of the house. <laughs> We're the Mary Wallopers. We're a, a, a ballad group from Dundalk with elements of trad music. Do you agree with me? I agree with you there, yeah. yeah. Elements, elements of trad music. Nice. Well, the band is doing great, as you can see. We became a band by accident about five years ago. We just used to like playing ballads together. Playing for no money for five years in case the dome is watching. For the love of one's country is a terrible thing. 
Oh, it banishes fear with the speed of a flame. And it makes us all a part of the Patriot game. Oh, my name is O'Hanlon and I've just gone 16. Me home is in Mona, and where I was weed. I was taught me whole life, cruel England to blame. And so now I'm a part of the Patriot King. What's just gone two years since I first went away? With the local battalion of the Bell IRA. Oh, you read of our heroes, and I wanted the same. Oh, to play my own part in the Patriot game. Dominic Behan was the brother of Brendan Behan, in my opinion, one of the greatest uh, songwriters and performers as well. I think he's an incredibly underrated ballad singer. There's wounds from the fight and still bleeding and bad. I'd say the majority of people haven't heard him. They don't it's a really know him. You know, yeah. but I think he was the biggest like influence in Irish folk music in the last hundred years, like, easily. Up until his old age, he never gave up on constantly pushing new albums and new music yeah. and, and, and really seemed to be someone who did it for the right reason. Well, I don't give a damn if I shoot down police. Oh, they're lackeys of war, not ever guardians of peace. It's anti authority music, it's against the I'm government and for the people. You know, if the songs are about landlords, are about the church, are about, you know, the government, they're all things that people don't like. You know, the right people don't like. Uh, uh, normal human beings don't like those sort of things. I've had gangers big and tough Tell me tear it all out rough When you're building up and tearing England down I remember Carrier Jack He wore a hod upon his back And he swore he'd one day set the world on fire His face we've never seen Since his shovel it cut clean through the middle of a big high tension wire And I saw our balls McCall From the big flyover fall Into a concrete mixer spinning round Though it was not his intent He got a fine head of cement When he was building up and tearing England down I do, but it's an arrangement that's a lot more sad than most of the versions that I've heard of it because the lyrics are funny when you like and, and when I'm performing it sometimes people get this stuff about like you know it wasn't his intent he gained a fine head of cement you can do a funny version of it but also it's incredibly horrific and tragic like it's a horror film the stuff because it's all it is totally real like you know the health and safety wasn't a thing I can totally see why he had to use humour. It wouldn't be half as effective if he didn't make it funny, you know. Well, I think we take a lot of influence from, from Dominic Behan. You can follow the line through the Clancy's and everything, and that, that way of kind of, it's nearly theatrical. Right, so I'm going to do the uh, alarm clock, which uh, Dominic Behan recorded, I suppose. He had a style of, of uh, putting his political ideas into a very humorous kind of package, which is good. Oh, when first I came to London in the year of 39 The city looked so wonderful and the girls were all divine But the coppers got suspicious and soon gave me a knock oh, He was charged with being the owner of an old alarm clock Well, next morning down by Marlborough Street I caused no little stir the IRA were busy and the telephone did burr. Says the judge, I'm going to charge you with possession of this machine. And I'm also going to charge you with the wearing of the green. Dominic had strong views about folk music and could be critical of those he disagreed with.
One figure he always praised, though, was his friend, fellow socialist and songwriter Hamish Henderson, who shared many of Dominic's ideas. I don't mind folk music. I mean, if it's in the hands of people like Henderson or Vojak or Burns or Eric Bogle, it can be a fine thing. But then in, in the hands of lesser people, it can literally be a haven for cultural illiteracy. Alexander Fletcher mm -hmm. said, he was another Scot, he said one time, he said, let me make a, a nation's balance, and I care not who uh, makes its laws. Christ, I wouldn't like to live under some of the songs of Ian McCall or Bob Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> It's just great to hear someone dogging Bob Dylan into the ground and yeah. Ewan McCall. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I, I think that's class. Like, the upbringing in the Beaton family, I can't imagine they were too interested in impressing Impression people for the yeah. sake of getting that's ahead in life. You know, you know great. That's yeah. like punk. So, that's rock and roll. Yeah, Hamish Henderson um, was a poet, I guess, pr primarily speaking, but he identified as an oral poet. Dominic Bean seemed to hold much the same view. Yeah. He said, uh, I don't mind poetry, but I've never understood why if... Uh, writer's main job is to communicate why they would deal in the obscure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which it probably wasn't a famous thing. It's a lot thing. harder to write Sorry. something that's, that's understandable yeah. Yeah. straight away and still has that amount of colour in it. And stuff like that. Ten lines of metaphors here, but yeah. like, no good. Yeah, like yeah. The, there's, a, there's a whole thing of the complex is kind of where the art is, which is total bollocks. Like the, the, it, it's something as well that happens in folk music, I think, loads. Where if someone's up on stage, you, the audience nearly don't want to say they don't understand it because, because they're, they're just going, oh, it's just beautiful. Like, it's just beautiful, yeah. like the words are beautiful. On the 5th of June 1951, Dublin. It's written from Dublin, that place. The capital of Ireland. Spires in Dublin. Oh, oh. That's what it is in the light. It's because I said Dublin <laughs> <laughs> That's why the light's quiet. My dear Hamish, it is indeed with amazement that I realise it is now over a year since I've heard from you. But for the fact of having received your John McLean march and that I read a letter of yours in the Daily Worker, plus the fact that a couple of people told me to the contrary, I should have given you up as dead. What the bloody hell, may I ask, is wrong with you? That you couldn't sit down and write a letter to an old friend. However, all is forgiven and besides, your spake on Rabbi Burns in the worker is nearly enough to save you from hanging for murder, let alone not writing. By the way, my singing has improved remarkably since I gave up smoking, or so I am told. Well, dear friend, so please write as soon as you possibly can, yours faithfully, Dominic. <laughs> That's some letter. If it's water you want, you'll find nothing so rare as the stuff they make down by the ocean. The sea, oh, the sea is the Grog Al Mokree. Long may it stay between England and me. It's a sure guarantee that some hour we'll be free. Thank God we're surrounded by water. The Scotch have their whiskey. The Welsh have their speech. The poets are paid about Dominic spent much of his adult life in the UK, first in London and later in Scotland, where in 1954 he was invited to perform at the People's Festival Cayley by one Hamish Henderson. We travelled to the Scottish Storytelling Centre in Edinburgh to meet singer and archivist Steve Byrne to learn more. Hamish Henderson was many things. Hamish was a poet, he was a folklorist himself, he was also a soldier and a campaigner on a number of social issues. He ended up being orphaned at quite a young age and going off to study languages at Cambridge and through his incredible proficiency at, at language and linguistics uh, he ended up becoming an intelligence officer during the Second World War. When he came home um, he spent a bit of time in Belfast for the Workers Educational Association and a couple of years after that in 1951 he was one of the people who was involved in founding a thing called the School of Scottish Studies at the University of Edinburgh which would be, I suppose, akin to the folklore departments uh, in Ireland, um, but this is the main one in Scotland. He did so many different things in so many different fields uh, that he never shone very brightly in any of them in the sense that the public awareness of him as a figure is probably a little bit uh, lessened by his diversity. Uh, but that's not to, to say that his importance is, is any the lesser for it. Hamish is a much-loved figure among the folk revival generation of the 1960s and 70s. We travelled to Kirkcaldy to meet singer Chris Miles, who remembers Hamish's warm and encouraging nature. Hi, Mark, did you see a mighty coming before gay? A war the lama laws and north o' the tay. 
Yon man is coming, and the hill tune is turning out, for all share he'll win back to Glasgow the day. I came into f- to traditional singing later in life. I mean, I haven't been doing it since I was 17, at least not in front of people. The first time that I got up and sang somewhere, somebody said to me, where have you been for the last 25 years? And I said, hoovering which is probably not quite true. So I came across Hamish when he was elderly and and a well-established figure. One of the things that I remember about him was that he was warm and encouraging of people, um, good, bad or indifferent, you know, go for it. Um, Sing your song, that was well done. For him to be so bothered with people you know, little people like me that I'm just sitting around in a pub and to to bother to come and say that you'd enjoyed what had been sung and to chat to people was just how I I remember him most. Not for, for that kind of terribly important stuff that he did, but for the encouraging, warm human being that I had encountered in those early days. Like Dominic, Hamish was drawn to anti-authoritarian songs and wasn't afraid to mix humour with dark topics. We're always on the spree Eight army scroungers and their tanks We live in Rome among the Yanks we're the D-Day Dodgers in sunny Italy. Who were the D-Day Dodgers and what does that expression mean? Well, they were given that name by um, Britain's first female Member of Parliament, Nancy Astor, Lady Astor. Um, and it was what she used to describe soldiers who were fighting in the war but weren't at the DD landings, as if they could all have been there. But somehow or other, that this was where the real bravery and the real war was fought, which was obviously not people's experience in the Italian campaign, nor indeed in the, 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 the soldiers who were in Japan. So it was an angry rejoinder about being called the D-Day Dodgers. It's almost like we're embracing this description of ourselves and then the punchline is delivered at the end, but not without um, letting Nancy Astor know what what, uh, people thought of her as well. Dear Lady Astor, you think you're mighty hot Standing on the platform Talking Tommy Rod, your England sweetheart and her pride. We think your mouth's too bloody wide. That's from the D Day Dodgers in sunny Italy. Look around the mountains in the mud and rain. Find the scattered crosses. There's some that have no name. Heartbreak and toil and suffering gone. The boys beneath them slumber on. They're the D-Day Dodgers who stayed in Italy. Like Dominic, Hamish was no stranger to nationalist politics and is even reputed by some to have taken part in a bombing campaign targeting British post boxes that bore the e 2 cipher of Queen Elizabeth II. You know, just after the war, the early 1950s, he would be a Scottish Republican Socialist. Shortly thereafter, in 1952, we had uh, Queen Elizabeth II of England arriving on the throne, but she was not Queen Elizabeth II of Scotland. And that upset many people, and including many very, you know, normally quite reserved folk. And there was a bit of a, a stushy, to use a good Scots word, and Hamish was very much in the vanguard of that, with a whole kind of cultural flowering of people like Hugh McDermott and 
and Ewan McCall and, and you know, Dominic Bean would be involved in that as well. You won't find any post boxes in Scotland with the E2R cipher on them um, because of the, the outcry at the time. And Timothy Neat's biography sort of hints at uh, whether Hamish might have been a fellow called Sky High Joe who was involved in blowing up some of these new post boxes that were erected when the Queen came to the throne. I think all the People's Festival Cayley was started up in 1951, which was a bit of a riposte, I suppose, to the official Edinburgh Festival, which itself started in 1947 as a kind of peace process, peace project after the war. The fourth People's Festival Cayley was Dominic arriving, although he'd known Hamish for, for a few years by that time. Much like Bean, Henderson's songs continue to outlive him. Chris explained to me that one particular song of Hamish's, Freedom Kamali, continues to find relevance today. The night before we had our referendum for independence, and Sandy Bells was full of Catalans and um, people from all over the world that saw our attempt to, to, to speak for ourselves as a a kind of inspiration for them and two young lads came over to the session and they stood in front of me and I'd been singing and they said do you know Freedom Come All You and I said everybody knows Freedom Come All You will you sing it with us and they put their arms around one another and um, they started to sing it and a friend of mine who was planning to vote no <laughs> leaned over and he said give me that yes badge <laughs> and I'm going to vote yes um, and there wasn't a dry eye in the house, really. It's not just about independence, it's about a good world, a good, fair place to live in. Be just. And I think that's what Hamish Henderson is about. The Scots and the Irish have always been close cousins, and Hamish and Dominic's friendship seems to be just one of countless threads linking our two nations. We talked about the long-standing friendship between Scotland and Ireland. Dude, could you explain what it is, this, uh, this uh, for lack of a better word, Celtic connection we seem to have between Ireland and England? What, what, is, it, what is it about our two peoples? That, uh, no, you said Ireland to... and England there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you know that was a slip of the tongue. <laughs> You know that was a slip of the tongue, we're, we're, yeah. we're sure of that? Yeah. Okay, let me ask the question again. Whew. I think we're cut from the same cloth. I mean, obviously, historically and anthropologically, Scots were, were from, from Ireland and um, were connected in that way, but were connected emotionally too, I think. Small country, um, constantly battling off a bigger one, oppression, poverty, hunger... I mean, we had a potato famine in Scotland too. We had clearances, but our people had to go and leave the country because it couldn't sustain them. Um, wild weather, poverty, hardship, it shapes us. It's not in laughter, it's in shared pain that we reach out to one another. And it's unspoken, we kind of know it and feel it. It comes from a hard place, not a soft one. Um, you, you do want to identify with people who recognise who you are and where you have come from and what you have travelled through. Um, do not think that yourself. 100%. You're not like us. I mean, Irish people say to me, oh, sure, the Scots and the Irish are, are alike. No, you're not. But where it's important, you are. And, and that, that's all that matters, really. 
Well, friends, I've been asked to sing a song of my own, one of my own ballads. It's called The Monarchy is in Decay, and it's a lament for George VI. <coughs> it was written the day after he died. So, Modest Blythe Man is the en in the end of the hall. He has asked me to sing it, and I place all blame on Modest Blythe Man if there are any people so foolish as to be too royalist in the house. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, comrades, while I sing, oh, I for the diddle of the two joints, eh? On the works and pumps of an English king, oh, I for the diddle of the two joints, eh? It is my friends with deep regret, we take our leave of our royal pet, what is meant to us, we won't forget, oh, I for the diddle of the two joints, eh? Oh, I for the diddle of the two joints, eh? So we say, hip hooray! The monarchy is in decay. Who oh, I for the diddle of the time?